Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful that you have joined us for worship online as we worship here together. Today, we are celebrating the third Sunday of Easter, and the Easter season runs from Easter Day until Pentecost. Um, a few announcements. First of all, we miss everyone greatly, incredibly, enormously. And we look so forward to the time when we can come back in this sanctuary and worship together. But we also want to remember to pray for those who are sick, for those who have lost their jobs, for those who are in the health professions, the EMTs, all the medical personnel, and for those who are suffering from domestic violence. We have lots to pray for. But before we do that, let's join together in our songs for gathering. Sprinkle rises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverance.
and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. and the sea. Your river runs with love for me, and I will always open my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen the light, they will. Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love worship, let center our hearts on these words from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. With Paul's words ringing in our ears, let us worship the Lord. Please join with me in prayer. O oh God, your son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. And we all say, Amen. our fears and bids our sorrows cease, sings music in the sinner's ears, brings life and health and peace. My gracious master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the abroad the honors of thy name. To God all glory, praise, and love be now and ever give. My saints below and saints above the church in earth and heaven. 
like a nursing mother who cannot forget her child, like a father who welcomes the prodigal son home. So God does not turn away from us, though we come week after week, admitting we have turned from God's ways and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. God is merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Therefore, we know we are beloved children of God. We are called by the waters of our baptism to repentance and to new life. Let us join together in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Almighty God, our world is filled with trouble. Power disguises itself as truth. Convenience masquerades as goodness. Selfish pleasures imitate love. We confess to you, O God, that we have been caught in the web of the world's sin. By the power of the Holy Spirit, save us from these deceptions and free us for glad obedience, that we may see the joy of Jesus' resurrection and receive the promise of everlasting life. Please take a moment for silent confession. And let all God's people say, Amen. The assurance of pardon is this. No matter how slow we may be to respond when Christ calls, God is the patient guide, always ready for us when we return and say yes. Even if we can only give a feeble yes, Christ is ready to take that and build upon it the foundation of a wonderful life. When we say yes to Christ, we will be amazed at what is possible. Friends, believe and live in the good news that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for illumination. Lord, you opened the meaning of the scriptures to the disciples on the road to Emmaus and set their hearts ablaze. By the power of your spirit, Kindle our hearts as we hear your word proclaimed, that we may receive you with joy. Amen. Morning, Bert. Good morning, Ernie. What's the scripture for today? Luke 24, 13 through 35, otherwise known as the walk to Emmaus. Where is Emmaus? Well, it's just a bit northwest of Jerusalem. Oh, so, just a bit of a jaunt, right, Bert? Well, for walking, it was a pretty good distance, just under 30 kilometers. How far is that in real distance, Bert? <laughs> well, Ernie, in miles, as I believe you're referring to, they walked just under 18 and a half miles. Oh, you're right, Bert. That is a good distance. Yes, Ernie. Now, while they were walking, they ran into Jesus, but didn't know it at the time. Who? What? No, not what. Uh, who? Who ran into Jesus? Hmm. Well, it says two of them who were going to a village called Emmaus, but there is no reference to who who is. Well, when you figure out who who is, I'll want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very funny, Ernie. Let's not focus on exactly who it is walking, but rather on who they ran into while walking. Jesus, right, Bert? Right, Ernie. But as I said before, they did not know it was him. Why is that, Bert? Well, Ernie, that is a good question. I suppose it is the same reason Mary didn't recognize Jesus at the tomb. Hmm, okay. Why is that, Bert? <laughs> well, okay, I'm not really sure why, Ernie. Maybe it is because in both instances... They were so stricken with grief that they couldn't see clearly. Oh, tears got in the way. Well, it could be something like that. Anyways, they did not recognize Jesus until he broke bread with them later. Wow, he must have an interesting way of breaking bread, Bert. 
It could be for that reason, Ernie. Once they realized it was Jesus they were talking to, they made their way back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. Okay, so let me get this straight. There were two who's who were walking where? To Emmaus, when Jesus, who they didn't know was Jesus, showed up and walked with them. When the two who's figured out who Jesus was, they went where? To Jerusalem. Why? To tell who? The disciples. Right, Bert? <laughs> what just happened? Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles, starting in chapter 2. Listen now for the word of the Lord. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Here ends the first reading. scripture for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, 
about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be crucified condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not, did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The description of Jesus' journey with two disciples on their way to Emmaus is told with Luke's incredible writing skill. It pulls together many of the prominent themes about Jesus that Luke included in his gospel. And Luke wrote this gospel for Gentile readers rather than Jewish readers like Matthew. He wanted to show that Jesus the divine and human savior came for all, for everyone, for folks like you and me. This narrative explains that the self-revelation of the risen Christ, the Messiah, comes through two essential practices, interpretation of scripture and the breaking of bread. And nothing's really changed as this is the same way the church and those in the church relate to Jesus today. We meet the living God, the risen Christ, the Holy Spirit in the reading and study of scripture and in the breaking of bread. Beginning this narrative, we know Jesus is risen, but the two disciples don't know, not yet. 
early in the scripture, these two fail to realize it is Jesus who comes and walks with them because their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Their vision was temporarily clouded or they were so wrapped up in their discussion about what happened in Jerusalem that they have not taken a really close look at this one who has joined them. Cleopas and his friend talk about Jesus being a mighty prophet and about the chief priests and leaders condemning him and handing him over to be crucified. They talk about their dwindling hopes and aspirations that Jesus was the one to redeem Israel. And finally, they get around to the events of the third day, the empty tomb, a vision of angels, and Jesus nowhere in sight. And sometimes we don't see clearly either, do we? Maybe we are distracted by busyness, our worry, our self-quarantine, our coronavirus, and our minds are close to seeing something new or different. I don't want my face washed, cried Jane. Oh, come now, grandmother said and coaxed her. I've washed my face two times a day since I was a little girl like you. And Jane, looking at her grandmother's wrinkles, answered, yes, and just look at how it has shrunk. Sometimes we see things differently, don't we? So Jesus does two things that lead Cleopas and his companion to recognize him. First, Jesus interprets the Jewish scriptures for them. And combining the scriptures with the current events of Jesus' death and resurrection, God's purpose emerges into plain sight. The resurrection is not just a miracle of a revived corpse. It is the plan and reign of God being fulfilled. An accurate understanding of scripture is critical to recognizing who Jesus is and to grasp what all has happened. The second action that Jesus takes that leads to his recognition by the disciples is breaking bread with them. Luke writes, when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Eating the bread brings about recognition. It is a gift of God, a self-revelation of God, in which Jesus repeats the promise, I will be with you always. So this interpretation of scripture and the breaking of bread still go together. Whenever we break bread, we read scripture. Reformers in the 16th century insisted on this. And this dinner in Emmaus reminds us of why it must be this way. They are interrelated. They are blessed by God. They both confirm Jesus is the Messiah. St. Augustine in the fourth century defined a sacrament as a visible form of invisible grace. Some say a sacrament is God's love made visible. And it is a remembrance of Jesus' last supper with his disciples before he was crucified. But it is also a resurrection meal, a celebration meal, a meal like this one at Emmaus, a meal with the living God in Jesus Christ one shared in order to strengthen our belief, to grow us as disciples. It is a gift of God given in order to grow us and to grow the church. You know it is in the breaking of bread, in holy communion, 
that I strongly feel God's presence. The presider says, lift up your hearts. And the congregation says, we lift them to the Lord. I believe that in that moment, our hearts are joined with Jesus Christ present in the holy meal. Many scholars feel that the church is focused on the Last Supper and the aspect of repentance at the expense of the Emmaus celebration. This meal and many meals that Jesus shared with his disciples during his ministry were about celebration. In the prayer of confession, we address repentance and forgiveness before we partake of the holy meal. The famous Scottish theologian John Duncan of New College of Edinburgh tells this story. At communion one Sunday, when the elements came to a 16-year-old girl, she suddenly turned her head to the side. She motioned for the elder to take the cup away, that she couldn't drink it. John Duncan reached his long arm over and touched her shoulder and said tenderly, quietly, take it, lassie, it's for sinners. We all are sinners. We all are invited to take the cup and be forgiven. But don't forget that the bread and the cup are symbols of much more. Traditionally, the purpose of the sacraments is not to induce good ethical behavior, but to give humans access to God, which in turn does indeed change our behavior. God acts in the sacraments, which as the church father John Calvin saw so clearly, are God's idea designed by God to lead us to God. And if we say that a sacrament is a visible form of God's invisible grace, then we must recognize Jesus as a sacrament of God. Jesus came in human form to show us God's grace and forgiveness and everlasting love, to lay down his life for his friends. And if we are the church, the body of Christ, then we too are a visible form of God's invisible grace. Do we live up to being God's grace? A woman writes this story about her son. Seth, our curious five-year-old, couldn't keep his eyes off us when we were taking communion. A few seconds later, I stole a peek. He was watching his daddy at prayer after receiving the elements. Good parental example, I thought. My gratification was short-lived as Seth leaned over and whispered to me, What's in that stuff? You eat it and go right to sleep. So we come to this concluding scene in Jerusalem where there is a gathering of the disciples and it includes these two who had walked to Emmaus. All were confessing the risen Jesus and all were relating their experiences of meeting the risen Christ. Their repeated telling of and listening to the stories of Christ empower them as they are prepared for their mission to all the nations. This sacrament has many names, communion, holy meal, Eucharist, which in Greek means thankfulness, to name just a few. And this special meal is Christ's feast with the church. It is a foretaste of the great feast we will experience in heaven. And it is at the same time both lament as we remember the Last Supper and praise and celebration like this resurrection meal at Emmaus. And when this holy meal is received in faith, we encounter Christ himself. Today, 
Christ meets us in communion, opens our eyes, joins us together in this moment when we share the bread and the cup. And in this holy moment, something really special happens. It reaffirms each time we share communion with our Lord that we are called out of the world to be the church, to love and serve one another. We are called to pray for the world and to love the world, and our world is hurting right now. As we partake of the holy meal, we are strengthened by it, by God, by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, so that we can go back into the world as the body of Christ. If you have bread and cup, please bring those together now as we share communion. As we remember when Jesus was at table with them, he took that bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Friends, open your eyes and remember the words of scripture that declare that the Messiah must suffer and then enter into his glory. We have been baptized with water into his death and resurrection, and we are invited to his table. He invites us to share this bread with him and with each other. This is the Lord's table. He invites all those who trust him to come to this table. Come and meet Christ at the table. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Creator of the cosmos, breath of heaven, lover of us all, you are our praise, our life, our joy. You are there through desert wanderings, through pandemics and disasters, through rebellious running and tears of complaint. You are there when sorrow becomes our daily food. You rescue us from ruin and anoint us with blessings. You are there in stable and temple, river and hillside, cross and tomb and even beyond the grave. Rising sun, soaring spirit, radiant Lord, you are there in shining glory, overcoming death and welcoming us to life. You meet us in the breaking of bread. You pour out the wine of salvation. You feed us with grace and overwhelm us with love. By your spirit, make these gifts, your body and your blood. By your spirit, make us one with you and with each other. By your spirit, make us strong that we might share your love with your blessed and broken world. We lift up for your special care those who are sick, dying, those who have lost jobs, those who provide health care, those who stock our shelves with food, and all those affected by COVID-19. Lord, bless these and all those who are hurting in this pandemic here and around the world. Fount of mercy, fire of justice, dearest friend, bind us to you and send us out to seek and serve and sing your praise until you gather us up in glory and bright, unending song. And we all join together and say, Amen. Let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have debts against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And we all say, Amen. We give you thanks that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you have bread, break your bread. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Fill your cup, take some bread, dip it, eat it, or drink from your cup. The bread of heaven, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we all say, Amen. like living flame for through the loving son the father makes us one come take the bread come drink the wine come share the lord no one is a stranger here breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now a gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is heard. The unseen he meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon where angels see We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord.
Please join with me in affirming our faith with the familiar words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Bountiful are God's gifts to us. In gratitude, let us offer our hearts and the fruit of our labor for God's service in our offering. As we continue to worship from home, you can still mail your offerings to the church office, or you can use our online giving tool through our website. There's a link to that in the video description for this video. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your grace, accept the fruit of our labor and the offerings of our lives. Let us be a sacrifice of thanksgiving in union with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. week, please, please keep everyone in prayer. Please pray for those who are having a very, very difficult time, those who are sick, those who are dying, those who are working, and those who are not, those who are dealing with all kinds of problems. Keep them in your prayers, because remember, when Jesus broke that bread, and we take that bread and we eat it, we become his body in this world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always. And we all say, Amen. Amen. 